Hi guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. Um, I do apologize for my absence. Normally I try to do a video once every three days. I think we're going on almost four, four and a half where a new video wasn't released. Just want to put that out there. Sometimes when I do get bogged down with work, certain things that I got to take care of in my personal life, that can happen. I do shoot to release two videos every week on this channel. If you get a third and a fourth, just rejoice. Or troll me if you don't like the videos at all. You can always do that as well. I mean, I don't mind. It's entertainment for me if you do. Um, just one thing, guys. I would ask, though, um, in that regard, in all seriousness, one of the things that I'm trying to shy away from on this channel, and I told you guys this before, I, I kind of mention it in every video, I'm not really a fan of social media or YouTube. So the one thing that I try to do in my videos is to do this from a serious standpoint, okay? One of the things that I hate is when I watch a video on YouTube, and it doesn't have to be geared towards antiques and collectibles. It could be geared toward like real estate investing, something like that. And I spend 20 minutes of my time, and then at the end of the video, the person says, oh, April Fool's, this was fake, or this isn't true, or this didn't happen, okay? Or 10 minutes of the video is spent watching a guy eat tacos or throw Lego sets at the camera, okay? I just... I always wanted to respect people's time, whether it be I write an article for Antiques and Auction News. I think I'm pointing to the articles I've written up there. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it looks a little weird where I'm pointing. Um, or if it's a video I'm creating on YouTube. Okay? So one of the things I want to put out there is I thank you for watching my videos because one sore point that I think that a lot of people are zeroing in on some of these videos is, Sean, I don't want to watch you talk for 20 to 25 minutes. Get to your point faster. And some of the people in some of my videos have put comments where they like the long format videos, okay? I appreciate that. This is a thinking man's channel, okay? I'm not here to tell you what to buy. I'm not here what to tell you, tell you what to sell. I'm here to create a contrarian point of view while providing you with market fundamentals that help you analyze any market you want to within the greater antiques and collectibles trade. If you understand that, and that's something that fascinates you, then you should subscribe to the channel and watch my videos. If that's something where you go, you know what, I can watch another video, a dude's going to throw Lego sets at the camera, he's going to tell me what to buy, what to flip, how to make money, I'm going to go to that channel instead. No, no problem, brother. Really. Thank you for your time. It's just, it's not for you. Okay? This set of videos, or this channel, is geared towards people who want to either become a better collector, speculator, I'm going to say it, and or want to be eventually a sophisticated investor, or if you're already near or approaching that level, you want to be a better, more educated person with an open mind who listens to alternate viewpoints in regards to that topic, okay? Some of you guys, I'm going to tell you, even you guys who have subscribed with me from day one and sit here and tell me, I love your videos, there's going to come a video where you are going to hate what I am telling you in that video. And you're going to get to the point where you're going to get very frustrated. At that point, I just tell you this. Have an open mind, okay? We can disagree, okay? I've been wrong in the antiques and collectibles trade already, okay? I'm going to put that out there, okay? That said, I've been a lot more right or correct or successful in it than I've ever been wrong. Otherwise, I wouldn't have what I have today. I'm just going to say that, okay? And I don't mean that to a sound elitist or egotistical I'm just saying, though, that's the truth of the matter. So obviously, I know something. Let's just put it at that, okay? It's just like Harry Rinker. I suggest that you guys read Harry Rinker, um, some of his articles and commentary. I did two videos on him. He's 70 plus years in the trade, okay? Well, he's 70 plus years old, so he's probably been in the trade. If he entered like me as a young child, he's probably been in the trade 60 years, which I think he has. That said, you're not going to agree with everything that Harry Rinker says, okay? I don't expect you to. Even me, there's certain points where I go, hmm, let me weigh that a different way, okay? Having self-doubt is good. The problem is when you close your mind to all self-doubt, you become one of the speculators on a lot of the online collecting forums that keep repeating the same mantra. And year after year, they're doing the same thing over and over again, and all they're doing is treading water a lot of them, okay? That's nothing against those people. Okay. If you have a passion, maybe they don't. Maybe they're enjoying flipping Lego sets, and then after they take into account their expenses, all the profits and that, 
they pretty much break even. If that's what you want to do and you just enjoy it, that's fine. It seems like a lot of work though for me if I would go through selling Lego, Lego and I do have a Bricklink store, I talk about this, I filmed a video in there. Um, that said, that's not for me to not make a profit, okay? That's not for me to take so much of my time where I'm really earning only minimum wage, okay? If I was going to do that in any business that I ever owned and operated where I only made minimum wage, I really hate to say this, I would actually get a job at like a fast food restaurant or something like that just to kill the time. Because at least if I work a fast food job restaurant, a, a restaurant job like that, I can go home afterwards and not have to worry about my business, okay? That's why it always amazes me how some people glamorize certain positions or jobs, careers, businesses in the greater antiques and collectibles trade because they feel, well, I'd be doing something I love. Well, if you're not making money or enough to live on, I'm gonna tell you, it's sometimes not worth it, okay? And this is the hardest discussion I have when certain people will reach out to me and they'll say, this is what I'm doing, can you analyze my numbers? And if I agree to take a look and I come back to them and I say, okay, um, this is what's not gonna work, this is what you have to change, some of the advice I get back is, but I love doing this. Well, that's fine. You either have to make it work as a side business then, not your primary income, or you have to understand that the only way to grow your business is to sometimes change and adapt. That said, I'm gonna get into the topic of speculation and investment in this particular video because I wanna start going into antiques and collectibles as a valid alternative asset class. I cannot go in to that commentary until I set up the differences between speculating and investing. There are a lot of people in the greater trade operating in a lot of the mass produced collectibles and such that do not know the difference between speculation and investment, okay? For some of you, this video will be somewhat elementary. That said, there's gonna be tidbits in this video where I would encourage you to watch because I am gonna apply the topics utilized in this video and start throwing in elements of sophistication of investment. So you're gonna start to see more advanced topics come out through this video if you watch some of the commentary I'm gonna make, okay? So I apologize because it's now seven minutes and I pretty much did a full rant before we even got to the subject matter, okay? That said, when I was started out in the antiques and collectibles trade, I was very lucky. In high school, early high school, around 1992, I had an awesome mentor in the trade who used to see me go to a lot of the same flea markets, yard sales, antique marks that he would go to. So he kind of took me under his wing, we created a friendship, and he would teach me what he knew, okay? It was completely groundbreaking, some of the stuff I learned from him. He was a full-time picker in the trade. This was back when you could do something like that full-time, okay? He made a lot of money. Sadly, today he is dead, okay? Because he was 45 years older than me. I mean, I'm already 42, so you could imagine he would be into his 90s today if he would have lived that long. He died several years ago. But that said, one of the things he used to always tell me, he used to always tell me, speculation is a necessary evil in the antiques and collectibles trade. If you want to understand the business, never be pro-speculation and never be against speculation. You want to be right where the trend is and you want to analyze that trend the best that you can to make the smartest decisions. I never forgot that advice. Never. Um, another thing he used to tell me is you can't get mad at collectors who pursue items that may seem frivolous, like Beanie Babies, Pogs, some of the modern Pez dispensers, items of that, because they at least exalt passion for the items that they collect. And he used to always tell me that. He used to always say one of the problems with a lot of the older generations, and this was back in 1992, you gotta understand, he used to always tell me the problem that he would see with a lot of the dealers that were aging in the business was they only were concerned about higher end antique items, stuff like Tiffany glass, coins, currency, historical documents, bottles, 
certain types of pottery, primitives, items of that nature that had a long history of price appreciation and also a long history of demand and supply okay, out there in the market. And he used to always told me, those guys eventually get blind. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, they're not studying any other markets. They're not looking at like vintage toys, vintage games, stuff that was made in the 70s and 80s. Because now this was 1992 when he's telling me this. So obviously 70s and 80s was more relevant then to the time period than, than it is today. But he used to always tell me that. He used to tell me, stay fresh, understand markets, learn new markets, look at collecting stuff that you may not enjoy because you don't know if you're going to enjoy it unless you start collecting it. He would always try to expand my horizons. And I always appreciated that. And that's what I want to bring to you guys, my audience. Okay? So, without further ado, the simple difference between speculation and investment is speculation is hope of a gain. That's all it is. Hope of a gain. Investment is earning a return. Okay? Now we're going to apply this, and I'm going to give you some more differences between speculation and investment. Okay? I do need to state this first. In another video, one of the topics I'm going to be discussing with you guys is the difference between growth collecting categories and value collecting categories. I'm going to tell you this right now. That video should be the number one watched video on this channel. I'm going to tell you something else. That video will be the least watched video on this channel because the people that think they understand those concepts aren't going to watch it and the people that need to understand those concepts are going to get bored with it. Okay? Let me give you two examples. I'm going to state two items. A Nintendo Wii U system, factory sealed, and a coin. Which one's the growth collectible? Which one's the value collectible? This is going to shock you. I'll tell you. The Wii U is actually considered the growth collectible. The coin, or piece of currency, could be any of those categories, is actually considered a value collecting category. Now you're going to say, Sean, that makes no sense to me. The coins and currency that you recommend are all $1,000, $2,000 or more. How can that be? Because coins and currency, they're pretty much outside the realm of mass speculation right now because they have so much price history attached to them. For instance, if you want to look up an 1881 Carson City Morgan Silver Dollar in MS65 on Heritage, you're going to find certain coins that sell higher than others in those same, same grade and condition because of eye appeal. That's what drives the coin collecting marketplace. That said, though, you're really not going to find too many variances where all of a sudden an 1881 Carson City MS65 coin sold for four grand at auction and one went for 1200 Okay, There's several decades, if not hundreds of years, because it was minute in 1881, let's be honest, of financial data that backs the value of that item. Okay, Coin grading, third-party coin grading, came out of the 1980s, the early 1980s. So even if you collect graded coins, you can go all the way back to, I think, 1984 and start looking at pricing data to find the value of your coins and currency over that time span from 1984 to today. Okay, That is a large history of pricing information. Because of that, there's less people in that market that are going to cause a coin that should be selling for $1,200 to $1,400 to go all the way to three or four grand. Okay, It is a value collectible. The reason that people invest in it, and you should invest in value collectibles, is because over a long time frame, it has a sustainable history of value and growth, or both. Okay, It's not to say every value, every value collectible is going to go up in value, Okay, but they should at least maintain a relatively boring price history where you're probably going to eke out, and this is debatable, but this is always what I told people who invest in coins and currency of an investment grade. One to three percent a year is generally your return. Okay? And that's if you sell a collection of 25, 50 investment grade pieces 10, 20 years down the line. Okay? If you did everything right, you should eke out a one to three percent a year gain on that collection. Now, growth collectibles, that's what everybody wants to get into. That's your Lego sets. 
your vintage video games, your Amiibo, your vintage action figures, your modern day toys. Why does everybody want to get into them? Well, why not? Let's say I list this on eBay, this VGA graded 90 Wii U system. I might get $1,200, $1,300 for this, okay? That said, there's no guarantee the person that buys it for me at that price is going to get that amount. But there's also not much track data, financial track tracking data, to show how much these items have sold for because this item was made by Nintendo in what, 2015? How many of them out there are graded? Do you understand why growth collectibles are more prone to speculative bubbles than value collectibles? Does that make sense? I will do another video on that, but that is going to be a very important topic when I get to it, okay? I just want to kind of put it in your mind until we get to that video, okay? So now, let's go back to our topic on investment versus speculation. Let's talk about the meaning of speculation. Speculation is simply executing a risky financial transaction with the hope of making a profit. There's no guarantees in speculation, even in investment. I'm going to put this out there for some of you guys. You can buy what I consider to be a, an investment grade holy grail, whether we're talking artwork, historical document, coin, piece of currency, what have you. Doesn't mean you're going to make money on it, okay? A lot of that is due to the individual markets and also the person for when they sell. For instance, if you do not have five years or more to invest in antiques or collectibles, it's not for you. It's just like financial markets. You call up Vanguard and you tell them, hey, I want to invest in an S&P 500 index fund. I assure you, they'll let you. The problem is, though, if you don't have at least a five-year time horizon, you are really, really taking a risk. Okay? Five years is generally the holding period, the minimum holding period to invest in any type of asset. Okay? Whether it be real estate, stocks, bonds, commodities, and yes, even collectibles and antiques. Okay. In regards to investment, you are purchasing an asset or a security in order to secure stable returns. It is almost the exact opposite of speculation. Okay. Again, I already covered the time horizon, but the time horizon differences between speculation and investment. Speculation is short. It's generally done in less than a year. Okay. Everybody wants to go to their favorite store. They want to pull a gold Mario Amiibo from the shelf for $12.99 plus tax, and they want to flip that sucker on eBay for $50 to $70. They want to profit their money, and then they hope Nintendo releases more of those same type of Amiibo so they can run back to the store, take that $50 to $70, spend it on more $13 Amiibos, and continue the cycle. Okay? Right now, for those of you that are invested in Magic the Gathering cards from the modern era, that's exactly what you're hoping for. And one day, one day it's going to come. You guys are going to get burnt. I'm going to tell you, nothing can go up forever on a parabolic growth scale. It cannot happen. Be very careful in that market. Okay? I'm just putting it out there. Okay? Those of you that know the Pokemon collecting market, okay? I have boxes of Roaring Skies that I paid 80 some dollars for a box. I know some people paid 250 to 300 for them and thought they were still going to go up in value. I would never do that. I said, I will not pay a premium for a modern Pokemon product. That has been my mantra going forward. The only two boxes of Ancient Origins I have left are these two, and they're sitting down here. The other uh, Roaring Skies boxes I have are up in my one spare bedroom, to be fair. Okay? But I would never pay a premium for that stuff. There's no way. Let's talk about risk levels. Obviously, if you're going to invest in a vintage video game versus a piece of coin or currency, the risk level is going to be larger in the vintage video game, okay? And I'm sorry to say that. I know some of you are going to disagree and say, no, Sean, there's stable track records. It can sell for this. It can sell for that. If you remove um, passion and emotion from your analogy in your mind, you will come to the conclusion that... The graded coin is a much more stable investment than a vintage video game, okay? And I love video games just as much as the next guy, okay? You can see what's in front of me here. That said, you have to understand that if you're going to invest in that market or speculate in that market, okay? So obviously, speculation maintains a higher risk.
let's talk about the deployment of funds when we're talking about speculation or investment. I'm going to put a caveat here. Um, this doesn't apply to everything, but I think it is a good topic to talk about. Um, usually in, in, in involving speculation, a lot of collectors and even financial speculators use borrowed money. Um, I'm educated in finance. Went to Albright College in Reading, if you want to look that up. I have a minor in finance. I do hold a degree in business, business administration. That said, um, I do want to put a caveat out there. Just know that I am not your financial advisor. So I'm not licensed in any securities at the moment. So when I talk about this, I just want to put that caveat out there. Please do your own research if you're looking to invest in the financial markets based on what I'm saying. Okay, it's probably not wise. <laughs> that said, though, most speculation is done on borrowed funds. For those of you involved in the securities markets, you've heard something called buying a margin, which is usually a fool's errand. Most people who buy on margin lose big time. You will have a couple of people that make money and think they're God. Then 10 years or 5 years passes, they try to do it again and they lose that which they would have made and more. Okay, Borrowing a margin is not wise. Okay, Unless if you're Gordon Gecko. If you're Gordon Gecko, borrow away. You know something I don't. As for investment, investments are usually bought out of cash or cash equivalents. Okay, There are cases, and I want to put this out there because when you get to my level or if you have excellent credit, you're established, you can get very low cost credit, especially in today's financial markets. For instance, I can borrow money. I can borrow five to six figures at a very low percentage rate with some of it if I use 0% credit cards, I can probably get a $50,000 loan for 0% for the next 24 months. So if I'm looking to buy a rare coin or a piece of currency, I will use that credit card because it's not costing me any money for that capital. It's free, free capital for two years. Okay, That is something that should be known when you get to the sophisticated investment level. Most of the people operating in that level they are usually established and they have access to a lots of lines of cash or credit, or they can leverage other assets to raise capital very quickly. Okay. I have done both. Okay. For instance, I already borrowed against my own coin collection to buy more coins and currency for that collection. And it paid off handsomely for me. Okay. You can do things like that when you get to that level. Some of the auction houses, I'm not going to say names, I'm not going to go into specifics on this in this video, I'll do another topic on that, but like Heritage Auctions does have some financing options for well wealthy collectors and investors that you may not be privy to if you are not in that category or if you don't spend a considerable amount of money on their website. Okay, uh, Heritage Auctions, I'll just say it, has what's called the Legacy Program, Okay, which I'll go into in another video. But if you either bought or sold a certain amount of collectibles or antiques with them over a certain amount of time, you can get put into this legacy program that does have benefits when you buy and sell. Um, I don't want to do it in this video out of respect also for Heritage Auctions. I don't even know if they want people to know about the program, but it is out there. Some people will tell you it really means nothing. Other people will tell you, yeah, I use it for this reason and this reason. Again, I will go over it in another video. I'm going to try to make it very general though because I don't know what Heritage puts out there in regards to this, because unless if you're in that particular realm, you may not be aware of it, and I don't think Heritage wants people emailing them, hey, how can I get legacy benefits? Okay, if you were, if they wanted you to have legacy benefits, it would have probably been offered to you. I hate to say that, but you can get there, okay, and I can show you how, but again, another video. Another thing we got to talk about when we're talking about speculation versus investment is investor attitude. Okay, A speculator is generally more aggressive and has an element of carelessness that an investor does not. Okay, The decision criteria for a speculator versus an investor is based on usually limited market research, market psychology, an individual opinion, and basically passion. An investor, on the other hand, uses hardcore fundamentals and can look up and analyze financial performance of the item in question. Meaning if he's going to invest in coins, currency, historical documents, he's going to want to see a price history over the long term over how that item 
either appreciate appreciate it or depreciate it on the market as a whole. Okay? Or stay the same, which could happen. Last topic on this, because this video is already at 24 five minutes. Expectations of return. A speculator, obviously, I hate to say this, more often than not, has dollar signs in their eyes. Okay? They are looking at simple market psychology and individual opinion and basing their investment decisions on that alone. And that in turn is them hoping they're going to make a gain. Remember when I said in the beginning of this video, all is what speculation is, is hope of a gain. Okay? Investments, investors on the other hand, are looking at their investment from a fundamental business perspective and also, also they're looking at the market dynamics. Okay? Again, it's more involved. It's an educated guess. Okay? It's not even really a guess. I shouldn't even say that. It's more of an educated hypothesis that they want to prove. For those of you educated in science, that should make sense. Okay? Speculation is more the guess. Okay? That said, you have to understand this because I'm going to do a follow-up video on this where I talk about speculation and I go into my thoughts, and some of you are going to hate me on this, where I talk about speculators who scalp and flip items of a pop culture based nature like Funko Pops, Amiibo, and Lego sets. And ironically, I'm going to just say it, and I'll take the criticism in this video, I don't see much wrong with that. I'm going to be very honest. Because when we do that video, I'm going to talk to you about, like during the Amiibo hype, okay? I kept a lot of pricing data on items that were selling at retail and what they were selling for on eBay. And once you subtracted eBay fees, PayPal fees, shipping fees, when you see what the average speculator made on one of those Amiibos that supposedly was selling for $25 or $30 on the secondary market, you're going to see the amount of money they think they made in their mind was a lot greater than what it actually was when you take into all their costs and expenses into account. Okay? I'm going to show you that firsthand in an upcoming video. That said, guys, I do hope you got something out of this video. One of the most important things I put in this video and sprinkled it in was the topic of growth collectibles versus value collectibles. I'm going to do a whole video on that. If you guys understand that concept and can at least get something out of that, you don't have to agree with me on all the things I put forth on this channel. Matter of fact, I told you this from the start. This probably is not going to be a popular YouTube channel because I'm a contrarian. I'm teaching the fundamentals on how to analyze markets from my perspective in the greater antiques and collectibles trade. Most people, at the end of the day, they want to be told what to buy, when to sell it, and they want to be told how much money they're going to make before they even go in. And that is everything that is wrong in today's antiques and collectibles marketplace. It's fueled by starry-eyed, unsophisticated speculators, and it's even capital upon, capitalized upon by the glut of reality television shows we have out there like Pawn Stars, American Pickers to a lesser extent, but most notably Storage Wars and even Toy Hunter. And I will be commenting on those topics in an upcoming video as well. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video and good night.